Chicago for a football game. Temperature in the mid-50s. First feel of fall here in the Midwest. And the Bears and the Packers undefeated on Monday Night Football. Chicago on the toss and will receive as we get sent for another renewal in this rivalry between the two all-times in the National Football League. No one's won more games than the Bears. The Packers are second. No one's more NFL championships than the Packers. The Bears are second. And Hall of Famers, they are first and second all-time. Brian Urlacher in this uh, Chicago defense. Tough to run against. Packers don't have much of a running game. So Aaron Rodgers going to carry a lot. But first, it's Cutler and the Bears. Mason Crosby kicks, and off we go from Chicago. Johnny Knox going to take it from five yards deep. And a good tackle at the 15-yard line as Derek Martin gets us going on special teams. Here comes Jay Cutler, first-round pick by the Denver Broncos. But this is the team he grew up rooting for. He grew up in Santa Claus, Indiana, a couple of hours away. And what he's done with Mike Marks the first two games, John has a lot of folks excited because they're getting yards, and they're doing what Cutler does well, throwing the deep ball. Yeah, this should have people excited. Cutler has really responded well to Mike Martz. They're going to change formations repeatedly. They're going to put their offensive skill players in the best positions they can, but Jay Cutler can make all the throws. Mike Martz obviously not happy to have him run the first play, and he's screaming and hollering from the sideline about his personnel. Yeah, it was interesting. To start the game, they came out one set of personnel, brought guys out for confusion, and almost confused themselves. Matt Forte, Chester Taylor in the backs. They just beat the delay of game. And there's nowhere to go for Taylor. Clay Matthews, the reigning defensive player of the week in the NFC, makes the stop. So we'll see both backs, Forte and Taylor, good pass catchers. With Greg Olson, a tight end who can get down the field and the speed of Devin Hester and Johnny Knox on the outside. Chris Williams, hamstring injury. So the normal left tackle is out. Frank Omiel moved from right tackle to left tackle against Dallas. Jaws, he said it was the first time in a year and a half he'd been over there left tackle. Handled himself okay. Yeah, he, he did a very good job. Once he calmed down after that uh, first quarter against the Dallas Cowboys, did a nice job. No gain on first down, second down, first throw. Butler down the middle has Knox. Gain of 23, first down Chicago. If you get time in the pocket, this is what Jay Cutler can do. Frank O'Neill, we just spoke about, did a real nice job. Cutler has time. If you get time in the cradle, you will have time to get the ball down the field and execute the Mike Mark style of offense. There the see, you see the patented dig route to Johnny Knox. Brandon Manumaliuna, essentially a tight end, lines up at fullback. Woodson's pressure started this, and it's a combo sack with B.J. Raji and Frank Zombo, undrafted rookie out of Central Michigan, making his first NFL start. Well, Charles Woodson blitzes for the first time tonight. We had a feeling he was going to be real active tonight. You're going to see him coming right off your left side. He beats Forte to the inside. Clay Matthews keeps it alive. You get pressure on Jay Cutler, you get that furious Green Bay Packer pass rush in Cutler's face, it's going to be hectic for Cutler tonight. It's already 11 sacks in two games and a series for the Packers this year. Draw with Forte. Bouncing to the outside, gets back most of the penalty yards. Well, third and eight against this Green Bay defense. I'll take you through. They are not very deep up front with Pickett, Raji, and Cullen Jenkins, who's working with a broken left hand. He's got a big old club on his hand. Linebacking four, we've uh, already talked about Clay Matthews and his six sacks. Zombo out of Central Michigan was a defensive end undrafted. Makes the start for the injured Brad Jones. You're going to see five defensive backs a lot. That means two rookies, undrafted Sam Shields out of Miami. Miami and Morgan Burnett, the third round pick out of Georgia Tech. Welcome to the NFC North. And welcome to Monday Night Football. Here's that psycho package from the Packers. One defensive lineman. And five linebackers and five DBs. Cutler beats it with a first down to his fellow Vanderbilt alum, Earl Bennett. It's all about matchups, Mike. You get Brad Chiller, a linebacker on Earl Bennett, you expect your wide receiver to win. The psycho pressure did not get the Cutler. He had time. Take a look at it. Colin Jenkins, the only defensive lineman on the field, and Olin Krutz, 13-year 
years he's been the center of the Chicago Bears. They just stand in there. They keep their eyes open, their head on a swivel. Good pickup, big third down conversion. Especially after you had a sack to lose 11 yards. Able to get it all back. First snap from Packerland tonight is Forte to the right. Good job by Forte for about six yards. Matt Forte had a terrific rookie year, 1,238 yards. Last year, he just wasn't right. Never really kicked in. And, Ron, we find more and more it had to do with an injury he suffered with all year. And no question about it, the injury really slowed him down. He really regressed a year ago, but he had an incredible offseason. He got himself in shape. He fixed that hamstring problem that he had, and his quickness is back. And in a Mike March style of offense, that back as a receiver is critical. Forte looks like he's right. Six on first down. Here is Forte running for a yard and a half. Look, let's just say this up front. The only thing Matt Forte and Marshall Falk share in common are initials, okay? <laughs> but with Mike Mart's offense, people are talking about what running backs do. This is what Marshall Falk did. And John Forte is the kind of pass catcher that he will be able to help in that receiving column a lot. Yeah, Forte's not just the guy that has good hands. He knows how to run patterns. He has very good instincts. He knows how to set people up, and you can use him in an array of formations. He is a very accomplished receiving back. Third and a long two for Chicago. Devin Hester took an extra step there. He'll kill the play. It'll be a penalty for the motion at the top of the screen on the receiver. False start, offense, number 82. Five-yard penalty, third down. Going on Olsen, it'll be third down. I like the personnel package that the Bears had on the field. We're talking about Matt Forte's receiver. Well, they matched him up with another excellent receiver, Chester Taylor. Pick your poison. Who do you want to match up on third and three coming out of the backfield? of Green Bay, three penalties in the first three games, all three on Woodson. Well, there's no question about that. Charles Woodson playing the nickel corner right here. Hooks Hester, who broke flat across Charles Woodson's face. That's a good call by the official. So a great opening drive here for Chicago. Over five minutes they've kept it. Desmond Clark now in front of Forte. Woodson with the stop. Ball comes out, but whistle down first. And this big gain of a couple. That's one thing Mike Martz told us he's going to go to his Bubba package. The Packers have played almost all nickel in their first couple games. And they jump into two tight ends, two backs. They try to slam it at the Packers. But watch Charles Woodson once again going for the strip. Boy, that ball looks like it's out. Ooh, you, you know, now that you get a look at that, that might be out before it comes down. It was called on the field, no fumble. He's laying on a player, the elbow's down, but that ball's starting to move as the elbow comes down. I might throw the flag. Yeah, watching the Packers sideline. I don't see anybody throw it. They will not challenge. As Cutler's got a ton of time. Deep downfield for Hester. Too late. Out of the back of the end zone, incomplete. Morgan Burnett and Nick Collins, the safeties. Trailing Hester. I'll tell you what's impressed me so far is this Chicago Bear blitz pickup. Here comes the first cross dog. Watch inside. You're going to see two linebackers on a cross dog blitz. And A.J. Hawk loses his helmet. But if you let Jay Cutler stand in the pocket and look down the field, he's going to show off his arm tonight. Good pickup by Chicago early in this football game. Canadian football would have been a touchdown. Third and eight. There's your cycle package once again. Here they come. Woodson off the back. Didn't get there in time. Hester caught it, but brought down by Tremont Williams. And it'll be a long field goal attempt for Chicago. 
Well, this Charles Woodson, Dom Capers moves them all over the place, and he is one of the great disguise artists in this game. He'll come late, he'll come from nowhere, but when he arrives, he rocks you. Charles Woodson's blitzed three times in the football game already. Pretty obvious what Dom Capers' game plan is here. Robbie Gold with a 49-yard field goal attempt. Very accurate kicker. No good. Missed it from 49. So the Bears keep it for over six minutes, but get no points out of it. And the Packers will take over when you come back. A quarter of the 2.9 million Chicagoans, Hispanic or Latino. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take over from the 40. John Kuhn, the first carry for a gain of three yards. It's Kuhn and Brandon Jackson with the running backs for Aaron Rodgers, who, although there was a lot of buildup and a great preseason, we saw him in Indianapolis. Ron, he wasn't thrilled with the way he played the first two games. Yeah, he, he seemed to start out fast. And usually, you know, when you look at a quarterback, I always look at their feet first. And if they're a little skittish in the pocket, they're usually a little bit inaccurate. That's what happened with Aaron Rodgers through the first two weeks. But he recovered nicely in both of those games. After a gain of three, Rodgers back to throw for the first of many times tonight. Greg Jennings into Bear territory. First down at the 45-yard line. Tell you who's out there for Chicago. Kuhn and Jackson will be the guys in the backfield. It'll be interesting to watch what they do in the running game. Jermichael Finley emerging tight end with Jennings and Donald Driver still going strong at 35. Chad Clifton had some shoulder problems, missed a few practices this week, but caught the most practice on the important day and joins that offensive line group that solidified the end of the year. He gave up 50 sacks last year, but not many in the last nine games. They got better, and they're all intact this year. Play action with Jackson, Rodgers, Finley, ton of real estate. Jermichael Michael Finley inside the 20, first down gain of 26. The ability to extend the play is a trademark of Aaron Rodgers. They haven't run the ball a lick, yet he makes the play action fake. You see the Chicago Bears react to it. He gets outside the perimeter, and Rodgers, with the movement, makes a perfect throw. Look at the eyes downfield. I always like to see the quarterback focusing down the field. He finds his big tight end, Jermichael Finley. Time in the red zone tonight. Kuhn, not going to go anywhere, going to lose a yard. Julius Peppers, $91.5 million he was brought in for. I'm leading the charge up front. Big story tonight, Bears. Tommy Harris is inactive. Guy's been to three Pro Bowls. No injury, no discipline. Coach's decision. Tawina Adams, Sidonije also up front. Briggs and Erlacher, 88 start together for these linebackers. Highest any linebacker combo in the league. Chris Harris, the safety back there with Bowman, Tillman, and Manning. He was a bear when they went to the Super Bowl, went to Carolina. Now he's back with Chicago. Peppers moved, then the left side of the line moved. And we'll see if A.B. gets B. Nope. False start. Offense number 76, delayed reaction. To the defense entering the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, second down. I mean, you find a left tackle that wants to play against Peppers in this noise. Julius baited Clifton. Yeah. And that used to drive me crazy yeah. with Peppers. You know, they say they're going to call that on the defensive player for baiting the offensive player. I just don't see him making that call. But Clifton's going to have his hands full in this noise with a great rusher, Peppers. And here he is on the other side. He's going to go test Pouser. Second and 16, Bears bring some heat to the other side. It is James Jones. Keeps the legs going and gets a first down for the Packers at the seven-yard line. It's their third receiver, Jones. A lot of people think James Jones and Jordy Nelson are the best third and fourth receivers in football. But one of the things that makes Rodgers special is he can get rid of the football in a hurry from the shotgun. I mean, that ball's letter high, and it allows Jones to run after the catch. Aaron Rodgers, I think he might be one of the top red zone quarterbacks I've ever seen. This guy really has a feel for red zone offense. 
and the Bears dropped Julius Peppers in the coverage, and there was no way he was going to cover the underneath that out route. The confusion here for the Packers. So Rodgers, who has that great red zone streak without throwing an interception, takes a timeout. First and goal, Green Bay, when you come back to Chicago. McCarthy, the head coach, calls the plays. Rod Marinelli, who was the head coach in Detroit 2006-2008, is now the defensive coordinator here. Lovey Smith called the defense last year. The head coach has turned over to Marinelli, who he has spent many years with in the same system. First and goal, Green Bay. Rodgers over the middle. Greg Jennings, touchdown, opening drive, Green Bay Packers. If you don't have any steam in your pass rush, your scheme is going to be in trouble tonight. Aaron Rodgers does an excellent job looking off coverage and finding Jennings. Take a look at his shotgun. He looks to his right, throws the ball with great location. This guy is pinpoint accurate. They have to get some heat on him. Well, they went that quarters coverage, and Brian Erlacher is sponsored with that middle hole. He just didn't get there. Mason Crosby bangs through the extra point for Jennings. His 30th career touchdown. Aaron Rodgers continues the great play in the red zone. Packers on the board first. Tenth time the Packers and Bears have met on Monday Night Football. Green Bay leads it 5-4, and they strike first with Jennings, who usually finds the end zone at the end of a deep pass. At time, works it well in the red zone against Gerlacher and the Bears. Boy, Greg Jennings, he's one of the best-kept secrets in pro football. Outstanding receiver. He can run a lot of routes. And most of them are deep. He's the guy that's, you know, when you want to get the explosive play, it's Greg Jennings. Daniel Manning has one career kickoff return for touchdown. Brought down shy of the 30-yard line, Derek Martin. On the tackle for the second time with a penalty marker down back where you usually see offside of the kicking team. Probably tack the five yards onto this. Offside, kicking team number 55. Five yard penalty, re kick. And that's an area that drove Mike McCarthy huh. crazy last year. They had 118 penalties and 30 were on special teams. And they've got a lot of new faces playing. They've got a number of players hurt. They've made steady progress in correcting the penalty problem. But you never want to have to re-kick. This guy, Manning, has been a very good returner for the Bears. He'd like to keep Cutler and his offense pinned back in their territory. Yeah, you're right, John. He spoke about correcting those penalties through a couple games this season, only eight. So they've gone from uh, leading the league with 118 a year ago. They have minimized them, but uh, that one will hurt them right there. Interesting choice there. 32 is decent field position. Yeah. Lovey feels that uh, Dave Tobe's special teams can give him better field position. Crosby kicks from 25. Can he get to the 32 with this one? Yes. Good decision. Got out to the 42. Good job, special teams. Put a star on the paper of the head coach. Crosby had to go over there to help finish up the tackle. So Cutler will start at the 42. Can he match what Rodgers did? 4-4 four, four on the opening drive. 62 yards for the touchdown to Jenner. Good field position for the Bears at their own 43. And starting safety Nick Collins is not on the field for the Packers. Derek Martin, the backup, fifth year out of Wyoming is in there. So a backup and a rookie at safety. Cutler needs to bail out. Flag is down as he launches way out of bounds. Frank Zombo again putting pressure on. Holding offense number 63. 10-yard penalty, first down. Roberto Garza. A 
That's the one thing you don't want to do against the Dom Capers defense is fall behind in the down and distance. And Green Bay is mixing up their pressures. Remember, Chicago is not an offense that audibles Jaws. They're one of those offenses, hey, ready or not, here we come. And so far, Green Bay has generated pretty good pressure by utilization of these blitzes. First and 20. Cutler with some time. The coverage downfield good enough. From behind, Matthews hits him. Want a flag. Got one. Well, the one thing you got to like about Clay Matthews is the relentlessness. I mean, you may block him. You may chip him. You may double him. But he is going to stay after you, and there's clearly a face mask. But this guy's effort, this guy's stamina, impressive. Six sacks in the first two games, been very impressive. Keep your effort, head on a swivel with that guy. Yeah, speed, got it all. Great football family. The game is 10, the penalty 15. So the Bears pick up a quarter of the field on that one. into Olsen, the tight end. Wilson went for the ball, stripped it, but it went out of bounds. So it'll be a first down if Chicago keeps possession. That's one thing you can do with a joker tight end like Olsen. He's six foot six. You can split him out like a wide receiver, and he can use his size and body control to his advantage. That's Charles Woodson, a pretty darn good defender that he's running a back shoulder fade against. But once again, Charles Woodson punches the ball out. That's two in the first quarter for Woodson. He's going to get one. A little we trickery go. here. And Jaws, they motion out to the Wildcat. And Forte puts it in the belly of Chester Taylor. A lot of work for a gain of two and a half. Well, it's just one of those situations where you're trying to just disguise what you want to do. Give them a different look. Give those coaches something to think about upstairs. Mike Martz, you know, getting a little creative with his play calling right now. Yeah, but Jay Cutler <laughs> lined up as a wide receiver, and he was going after these Green Bay Packers <laughs> as a blocker. Take a look at it. It's going to be coming right in here. He's going low. He's going after somebody. Jay Cutler wants this one. Him and Aaron Rodgers, don't let the personal friendships affect your viewpoint. He wants to beat Aaron Rodgers. This is second and seven. Cutler shot down the middle. Intercepted by Derek Martin. We just tried to take out on that last play. Martin ruled down by contact to the 14. And what played Cutler last year. 26 picks a season ago. His second in 2010. Nick Collins injured his knee on the sideline trying to get loosened up. Derek Martin in in his stead and has a pick. Not only were the Cutler interceptions the most in the league last year, it was the second most in the last 10 years, and Jaws Green Bay was the beneficiary of a half dozen. Well, you've got to just be careful where you're throwing the football. I mean, that, that, that's easy to say, but as a quarterback, you have to see the throw. In other words, you have to see the lane, the flight of the football, and all these throws are just bad decisions. They weren't there. You cannot predetermine at the line of scrimmage where you're going to throw the football. You get a look in that pre-snap phase, get an idea of where you want to throw the football. Football, but ultimately when the ball is snapped that's when you read the coverage Mike March is uh, doing a much better job of zeroing in Jay Cutler but that was not a good throw he just made and in a second we'll show you the uh, latest add to the INT list Rogers first down and he throws a shot off from Jordy Nelson's hands the big hit came from Chris Harris incomplete Back to the Cutler interception. Here's the last interception. He's going to be trying to get down the middle of the field. To see those safeties abide, there's a hole in the middle of the field. But A.J. Hawk is in a good position there on Greg Olson to undercut the throw. So Cutler has to go over the top, and the ball just gets away from him. But it wasn't there. This is a throw he should not have made. There was excellent coverage on Greg Olson. A.J. Hawk in good position. If it's not open down the field, don't think touchdown. Think check down. Brandon Jackson. 
Nowhere to go. Lance Briggs, loss of three. Third down coming up. Yeah, these Chicago Bears, not only are they an outstanding run defense, their statistics prove that. They stuff you. They make tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Lance Briggs, Erlacher, they run through gaps and they tackle you behind the line of scrimmage. That's the third tackle for Lance Briggs behind the line of scrimmage. He and Erlacher love to penetrate. Tough to run on these guys. Yeah, 1.4 per attempt through two games. You nailed it, John. The game with Rodgers and Erlacher as the fans roar on third down. Erlacher and all the Bears coming. Quickly to James Jones. Made the first man miss. Where's the spot? Needs to get to the 20-yard line. His foot was out of bounds at the 16. So it was going to be short of the first down. Manning had to clean up Zachary Bowman's miss. But it will be a punt by the pack. How about that call by the Chicago Bears? Rod Marinelli comes with an all-out blitz. And you have single coverage everywhere. And Rodgers catches, releases. And you have to make that tackle in a one-on-one -on -one situation if you all-out blitz. Chicago's lucky there. Tim Maste, rookie punter out of Kentucky, kicks to Devin Hester. Once feared, now a very average punt returner. Don't kick it to this guy. That's part of the reason the numbers are down, because people are not making that mistake. He's going to get a chance. 55-yard kick. What a kick from the 29 Hester. Looking for space. Got a dozen out of the return. Good field position at the 41-yard line. We have a marker down with an illegal man downfield for the Packers. Or hold. During the kick. kick holding receiving team number 53 10 yard penalty first down first initial signal is going to be illegal man downfield but that was not the case the holding flag was the call so lovey smith's team will not have the benefit of the good field position they'll start back inside their own 30 a lot of people didn't know if lovey smith was going to be back this year as the head coach of the bears after the super bowl appearance off the 13 3 2006 season been a 500 team but lovey comes back brings in mike martz who he was familiar with they were on the same staff in st louis together but martz was the head coach lovey ran his defense and these friends get back together to try to get the bears back to the postseason you know when you're a head coach in this league you know you've got to have the courage to make those tough decisions not only a player personnel but within your coaching staff you know and he, he, he he made the tough decisions you know it may have not been a, a situation where everyone said oh bring those guys in but he brought in quality coaches and there's one of them mike marks so the bears coaches on the sideline lovey was asking for an explanation he, they saw the same thing we saw the initial signal of illegal man downfield so they start instead of the 41 at the 19. And Cutler gets Hester back to the 35. A 16-yarder is going to end the opening quarter. Scott Cutler has no conscience. <laughs> he throws an interception, <laughs> and he comes back and makes a throw like that. This is going to be a heck of a football game. What a throw by Cutler. Amnesia. I say it's amnesia. You forget about that last play. After one along the lakeshore, 7-0 Packers. forever the Bears one of the charter franchises in the National Football League Packers came in a year later we start the second quarter of the 180th meeting between these teams one playoff game and 178 regular season ones before tonight the back penalty Cutler over the middle late is intercepted ruled incomplete ruled incomplete as Collins back in the game after injuring his knee almost had the second kick in three pass attempts Nick Collins does a real nice job. He's backside of this play, but he reads the quarterback's eyes. You see him jumping the route of Johnny Knox. The ball does come out, but very instinctive play by Nick Collins as he's reading Jay Cutler as he backpedaled away from center. Almost the fourth straight game with a Collins interception of the Bears. 
second and ten. Pressure from Cutler's right will bring another sack. Tremont Williams off the corner. You know, when you play against Dom Capers and the Green Bay Packers, the one blitz that has to concern you the most is the corner blitz, especially from the short side of the field. Take a look at Williams coming from the bottom of your screen. Clean, nobody accounts for him. That's easy pickings for the Green Bay Packers. Third sack tonight. Jay Cutler's got to react better to that, John. It's right in his face. He's got to see it. The ball's got to come out. There's route adjustments. Quarterback has to see it. Talking about Dom Capers, twice a head coach in the league, dialing up this pressure. Time here for Cutler. He's got to make 15 of them. Very close at the line. The mark is good. First down, Chicago. Well, we talked about Aaron Rodgers and his ability to extend the play. How about Jay Cutler on that one? Broke the pocket, a three-man rush by the Packers. They're dropping eight in the coverage. Got pressure, nothing there. Steps up, he sees that zone coverage, knows where that first down marker is, and just gets there. Good instinctive move by Cutler. Once he saw that the defense had expanded, he had the opportunity and took it. That can't happen. You've got eight defenders, 16 eyeballs on Cutler. That can't happen in a three-man rush. It just happened. <laughs> First and ten. Trying to get the screen to Chester Taylor, but just got rid of it as it was well covered. When we talk about Mike Mart's offense going up against Dom Capers' defense. Two head coaches who've been successful as head coaches. Then after that didn't go as well, back as coordinators. And for all their time in the league, Mart with St. Louis, Capers with Carolina and Houston, they have not met, have not matched. John, you always like to remind us, coaches coach against coaches. And these guys with unique and distinct styles, very intriguing first matchup here tonight. Very intriguing. A run for the 46 with Chester Taylor. And I'll gain about six yards. A.J. Hawk has played a lot here tonight. Joins Ryan Pickett on the tackle. Let me come back to coaches, coach against coaches. This, these are guys who know what they do, yet haven't seen each other. So this is a very interesting feeling out process. Well, there's no question. And Dom Capers is working from scratch. He's never seen Mike Mart's offense and how he interprets it with the Bears. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a game of adjustments. But Dom Capers said no big plays. And we have got to get Jay Cutler off the spot. we got to get him off the mark tonight. Because when he gets hot, this guy stays hot. See if they can sustain on third and four. Pressure again. Got to him again. Cullen Jenkins. That is the third Packers sack in 21 plays. Well, it's a three-down situation again. And Cullen Jenkins... He is the best pass rusher. Excuse me, he's coming off the left side. You're seeing him coming off the left playing defensive end. He's the best pass rusher that the Packers have from a defensive line standpoint. That's three sacks for Jenkins. And he's got a big club on his hand. It's impressive. Former Giant, decade-long bear, Brad Maynard. Looking to the sideline. Nice job by Maynard. As he backs up the Packers inside the 10. Will be at the 7. Steve Erlacher and the Bears defense can kick start Chicago after a 48-yard kick perfectly placed by Maynard. It's always great to be in Chicago, especially that first feel of fall. They get the Packers and the Bears. Rodgers and Green Bay start at the 7. John Kuhn the carry, no game. Peppers the tackle. Let's go back to that touchdown pass Aaron Rodgers made. You'll see the hole in the Bear defense, right in the middle of the field. But Rodgers looks to the right because he's playing a game with Brian Erlacher. Once Erlacher turns his shoulders up the field, he knows he's got the chance to get Greg Jennings behind it. Look at the eye manipulation. Move Erlacher. Now you got the speedy Greg Jennings behind him. That was really, really good design and execution and playing a game with Erlacher. Second and nine, play action for Rodgers. Shoot it down the middle. Wow. Caught by Finley at the 35. 
First down gain of 27 to the tight end. That's major league right there. <laughs> Rodgers yeah. uses a dummy snap count, sees the bear defense, comes out of the fake, firing for his big tight end, your Michael Finley. I call this guy the big cheese. Look at him get down the field, and this ball is thrown with not only great accuracy, but confidence that Finley's going to go up and get it. What a throw and catch. Big cheese. Yeah. The whole Wisconsin. Two 27 yard completions for Finley. Pressure on Rodgers. He gets away from Mark Anderson. Got out of the pocket. So you can throw that one away and not get the intentional grounding flag. Look at a little soldier field in your face mask. Peppers finished it off. It's another very good play by Aaron Rodgers. Escaping the rush, not once, twice. Take a look at it. Good pass rush by Mark Anderson, Julius Peppers in pursuit. And a heck of a job by Rodgers throwing the ball away. Julius Peppers, relentless coming after Aaron Rodgers. Second down, got rid of it quick to Donald Driver. Gain of six. Here's the Sports Center right now with Trey Wingo. All right, Michael, thank you. This summer, Trent Edwards was good enough to win an opening competition to be the starting quarterback. He was then benched, and three weeks later, he's not good enough to be on the team. Released by the Buffalo Bills, they'll go with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Meanwhile, sad news to report. Hall of Famer George Blanda died today at the age of 83. He played 26 seasons in the NFL, most notably with the Oakland Raiders. Michael. And Trey, the first decade was here with the Bears in Chicago. A moment of silence for Blanda before the game here tonight. Finley one-on-one -on -one with Tim Jennings down here at the bottom of the screen. On third and four, Rodgers, no time to find it. Bought himself some time. Now he's got Kuhn running free, and the running back catches it for a first down. What a job by Rodgers keeping the play alive. Aaron Rodgers, very impressive in the pocket. Escape ability, mobility, then looking down the field to make a play. You'll see the four-man rush from the Bears. He's moving around, doesn't find anyone. What an intuition. The rush behind him, he gets away at the last minute. Gets away from Brian Urlacher and flicks the ball down the field. Packers caught the Bears making substitutions and get Kuhn to run it for about seven yards to the 41. The Bears were spread out all over the field chasing after Rodgers. They were a little tardy making the personnel change. There's a big game. You know, one of the things that Packers love to do, that last third down, they get Finley over here one-on-one -on, -one on the backside of trips, and Rodgers is going to try to throw the ball against Jennings in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But watch the disguise. Chicago rotates over the top. Excellent work by the Chicago Bears defense, disguising coverage and fooling Aaron Rodgers that time. And they were also trying to go quick as well, wondering if Kuhn made a clean catch or not, in addition to the personnel coming off the field. So... Green Bay right on point tonight. Rodgers, first down at the 35-yard line. Finley for the third time tonight. And Rodgers is 9 of 11. There's been a sharp start for Aaron Rodgers, spreading the ball around as well. So four or five different receivers catching passes. Meantime, Cutler threw an interception as the Bears got down to the Packers' 25. a bad throw, an overthrow. In the end zone, it turned into an interception. For these two 20-something quarterbacks who've developed a good friendship despite the depth of the rivalry. Thus far, Rodgers the better of play. Jackson left. Oh. Jackson down. Erlacher. This guy, Brian Erlacher, he'll hit you. Six foot four, 260 pound, instinctive middle linebacker. Here's a reverse pivot, toss to Jackson, and Erlacher scrapes right over the top, and he'll lower the boom. Ryan Erlacher, he's only about 50 tackles shy of becoming the all time leading tackler in Chicago Bear history. Great to see him back. He plays like that, he'll certainly get the record. Second and 13. Rodgers is checking it to Jackson out of Nebraska. Brandon Jackson gets it to the 30-yard line. 
fighting hard for a gain of about seven. That Packers sideline wanted a flag. Erlacher hustled over there. We mentioned at the beginning, Brian Erlacher, first game last year, Sunday nighter in Lambeau. He gets a right wrist injury out for the season. He was just sick. He was away from football. He killed him to be away. And he came back with health and such a renewed energy. Plus Rod Marinelli, the new defensive coordinator's passion. And people saying, oh, you're 32. Thanks for playing. You're too old. Erlacher has come with a great set of steam here in the first couple of games of the season. There he is right over the center in that A-gap that we talk about. Trying to get in on Rodgers, who got rid of it quick and got driver for a first down. Mark it up at the 21. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, very good at the line of scrimmage. Checking the protection. Now he knows he's going to get to one of the best middle of the field receivers, Donald Driver. This guy will go in against anyone and make the catch. Those are tough yards in there. and No one better in the business than going inside and catching the ball in a lot of traffic than Donald Driver. But Aaron Rodgers got him in the right protection to get that ball quickly out to Donald Driver. See how high he is. Almost two of every three catches he makes since he became a starter at 0-2 in the middle of the field. Elite at the receiver spot. Rodgers to Brandon Jackson. Got a hit, but went forward to the 12-yard line. We have a flag. Holding offense number 73. 10-yard penalty. First down. Darren College, the left guard. Well, that's one thing about this Chicago Bear defense. They play a lot of zone, snap after snap, and they force you as an offense to conduct 10, 11 play drives. And of course, you know, during the course of the drive, somebody's going to make a mistake. That's what the Bears are counting on. And so far this year, you talk about percentages, John, too. Only one out of maybe eight drives go 80 yards for a touchdown. So you play that percentage that, hey, sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake, get a holding penalty, make a mistake, turn the ball over. Why you play those percentages. Four tight ends are dressed for Green Bay tonight. Andrew Quarles, the rookie out of Penn State. Fifth round pick, number 81. In the slot at the top of the screen. Rodgers throws incomplete. Charles Tillman couldn't get a hand on it. You know, the Packers have had so much continuity on offense. These players all drafted by Green Bay. And the Bears have had a lot of continuity. There's just a misfire. Threw the ball over Jennings' head, and Tillman almost intercepts it. But when you see an offense that's been together for a while against the defense that's been together a while, you can expect the defensive struggles. These teams know each other very well. There's the point, John. Two-thirds of this Green Bay roster drafted by Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy. Thompson, the GM. Most homegrown team in the league. Second and 20. Rodgers, too tall for Jennings. And it's third down coming up. And I thought that was interesting, as Rodgers told us last night. You know, Aaron Rodgers has been a starter here now for two years and three games. But he came in and sat down in the meeting said, hey, I know what's coming with the Bears. Like you said, they haven't changed. And it's my 11th time preparing for them in this system. Even though Favre was the starter, Rodgers was preparing for these Bears. Yeah, and it's, it's the same look. You know, Lovey Smith has been the head coach now. It's his defense. It's that bend and go break style. Tampa, too, no matter who the coordinator is that comes in here, they play that same style. So Rodgers was prepared for it. From here, a field goal will be 48 yards. See if they can get more. Kuhn, the running back, will instead make it a 37-yard field goal. That's a really good play right there. Green Bay checks the ball down and gives Crosby a chance for a mid-range field goal. But Julius Peppers, again, over here against Clifton on the left side. That's the marquee matchup tonight. And so far, Clifton's handled his own. He but did an outstanding job there, right? John, you're right. Boy, Clifton had a man-to-man, -man, no help. Kept him out, setting up the field goal. Good start to the season for Mason Crosby, officially 38. Out of the hole of the punter, Maste knocks it through. And the Packers take a 10-0 lead on the Bears. Late second quarter. Notre Dame Boston College will be available wherever the Stanford Argy game is not, either on ABC or ESPN2. Four kickoff by Crosby goes out of bounds. 30 yards from the kick spot. The Bears will have good field position. Off out of bounds. Picking team. The ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down. Timeout. 
Well, it's been a good job of keep away and move it for the Packers offense. We'll see if the Bears can sustain when you come back. A lot of Bears jerseys out downtown Chicago today. A lot of buzz on the streets. Chicago 2-0 and off to a good start. But uh, held in check thus far by the Packers leading 10-0. As the Bears take over at the 40 after the kickoff out of bounds. Chicago's fourth drive will start with a Matt Forte run. Pushed back by Matthews. In trouble as Zombo gets over there as well. Big loss of seven. Woodson finishing it off. Well, they're spending a lot of time in the Bears' backfield. And when Chicago's thrown, the pressure applied from Dom Capers has been intense. Charles Woodson early in the game. Blitzes on 4K. The coverage down the field holds up, and they gang tackle Cutler. And then just moments ago, the short corner blitz. Tremont Williams not accounted for. Easy sack. And this is second and 18. And situation Capers loves. Cutler loading, throwing. Hester slipped and fell down. Could not bring it in. Third down coming up. Oh. If you do give Cutler some time in the pocket, he normally makes this throw. Offensive line was solid there, sturdy in the pocket. You can see Cutler's under duress so far. Dom Capers dialing up the pressure. It's hard to set your feet. When you get hit, sacked, knocked down, it's hard to stand in there on these seven-step drops. Packers rush four. Cutler and Bennett on the wrong page, and it's three and out Chicago. Well, this Mark's Cutler relationship looked very good for two games. They look a little bit out of sync so far here tonight. Well, when you play against one of the top three or four defenses in football, if they get down on you, if they get up on you, I should say, this Green Bay defense, they love that. Maynard kicking to Tremont Williams. Yard kick Williams from the 19. Fans want to block in the back. So do the Bears on the sideline, and they're all going to get it. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 29. 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. So, uh, eight penalties, first two games against Mike McCarthy's team, four tonight. Where were you 18 years ago today when Brett Favre made his first career start for the Packers? It was rookie head coach Mike Holmgren against rookie head coach Bill Cower for the Steelers. Sterling Sharp, the touchdown. The Packers end up winning 17-3. Why do we bring that up? Because Brett Favre started, obviously, every game that he was a Packer. That NFL record now, 288 consecutive games. And Aaron Rodgers has started every game since. So the Packers have started two quarterbacks in exactly 18 years compared to the Bears, who've started 22 in that time, the most in the NFL. And the Packer guys have done everything, and the Bear guys have done nothing. No Pro Bowls. A 300-yard game is headlines in the trip in Chicago. Rodgers loading for Jennings downfield. Couldn't pull it in. Danielle Manning running with Greg Jennings. You know, the Green Bay Packers run the ball just enough to set up what I think is one of the most wicked play-action shot teams in football. Take a look at this. Rodgers is going to come out of the fake, and they're going to full protect this, and he's going to launch it 60 yards in the air to Jennings and give him a chance to make another big play down the field. But when they take shots, Jennings is the shot guy. Mm -hmm. He's mad at himself for that one. And that guy has some hose. What an arm Rodgers had. The Bears need to stop, Mike. They need to make a play. Here's Brandon Jackson out of the backfield. Jackson tackled by Erlacher right at that first down mark. You know, let's talk about these backs here for a second. We mentioned at the beginning of the show, Ryan Grant, 
out with the ankle injury surgery done for the year he had surgery on Tuesday 1200 yards rushing the last two years Brandon Jackson has been their third down back John Kuhn was a fullback now those are the guys being asked to play running back yeah. for Green Bay Mike you take a situational back like Brandon Jackson is really your third down back and say okay you're a guy you've got to carry the load that is hard to do they really did not have another tailback that could back him up so you know you end up with John Kuhn becoming a guy that's your, 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 your tailback and getting carries this game but it is it is not a dynamic nor explosive running game but they give you the illusion of a running game it's every once in a while they get uh, Aaron Rodgers outside on the pocket and swing it down the field to Greg Jennings look at these personnel groupings the Packers use here comes five more eligibles five more guys are gone they're going to use all their fullbacks they're going to use all their tight ends they're going to do the best they can in Ryan Grant's absence but they're going to give this young man Brandon Jackson an opportunity to deliver I like him second round pick in the 07 draft out of Nebraska here he is running right Erlacher hits him Jennings hits him but he keeps going and gets a couple of yards who knows maybe he'll develop into a number one back but Grant was a downhill back and for all the times we've been with the Packers Mike McCarthy always talks about I want to run early because those one yarders become two yarders and in the fourth quarter they become difference makers can they still do that that's well the Ryan Grant wasn't a household name coming in here either he no. was an undrafted free agent they've got two other undrafted free agents playing on defense they're gonna develop their players they have confidence in Jackson it'll be fun to watch Game of two. Pressure as Rodgers is hit by Israel Idonaje before he can even set and throw. That play didn't look good from the snap. Obviously, a little play action, but the Bears had some incredible pressure. Adonage right up the middle on his crash to the inside, inside of Tauscher. <laughs> I mean, Tauscher just whiffed on him. That's the one thing with this Chicago Bear football team. They have three or four guys that play in a rotation, and they're all very active. Adonage is one of those guys. He gives him 12 to 20 snaps every Sunday, and he can rush the passer. And, and uh, Matt Tawina, who got the start tonight, been very active through the first couple games for the Bears, and you can see why. They've got that rotation. They can get him in the game. And also in that play, Chad Clifton, got banged up a little bit. Brian Balaga has come in the first round pick for the Packers. He grew up a Bears fan. Uh, so many Bears fans in the area as we mentioned with Trey earlier. Saddened by the news of uh, George Blanda's passing today. NFL record. Man played 26 seasons. The first decade here with the Bears. They went on to Houston as they won the first few championships in the AFL and then Oakland with the Raiders. He's still the fifth leading scorer in Bears history and an inductee in the Pro Football Hall of Fame 1981. John, you got to meet and know him a bit during your time in Oakland. Sure did. It was a great man. Going to be missed. One of the great clutch kickers during his time and his quarterback play as well. Honored before the game with a moment of silence here. Third and eight, Rodgers waits, gets to Finley out of two tackles, but he can't crawl for the first down as Peppers hustling all the way down the field. Finley's hopping like he's got the first down, but it's fourth down at the two-minute warning. Packers will punt. We'll see if the Bears can make something happen with a return. When it was fourth down and you were punting to the Bears, it used to be electricity. A crescendo in Soldier Field because Devin Hester went back. You know what he did those first 32 games, the splash, seven punt returns. It's been almost as many games since he brought one back. And the rookie Tim Meste will punt to him. First Rob kick was 58 yards. Kicking away, kicked a line drive, 35 yarder. Hester hit it hard. There goes Devin Hester. Meste, the putter, brought him down at the 43 yard line. He was one step away from a big one. Well, if I'm Mike McCarthy, I am not happy at all. He hit a line drive right to the most dangerous return guy in football. Fortunately, the punter made the tackle because that was a house call. But do not kick a line drive to Devin Hester. Well, Mastay makes a great tackle. There are very few punters in the National Football are going to make that play on Devin Hester. Tackle out of necessity. Wow. Just a seven-yard net. Great chance of the Bears, who haven't been good on offense in the whole half, to get right back in this one. 
Butler, all three timeouts for Johnny Knox. Inbounds, ruled a catch at the 12. Last two minutes, any replays handled upstairs. If you give Cutler time, he will rope it down the field. A deep corner route, one foot, yes. two foot, it is a catch. If you protect Jay Cutler, he can make those kinds of throws. Gain of 31, Bears going quick to avoid a review, and they hit Olsen, the tight end, to the eight-yard line. And I give Jay Cutler a lot of credit. He has been rocked here in the first half. And to come back and take another seven-step drop and throw a strike down the field and then get hit again, you can't deny this guy has really shown some toughness here well, in the first Just think half. back to, to last week. I mean, yeah. his first ten drops, he got rocked by the Dallas Cowboys. He couldn't plant his back foot there in his face. Came back, responded nicely. So far, we're seeing the same thing tonight. Can it continue? Second and goal, a word for Hester. Pressure up the middle, shovels it to Forte. Woodson, good tackle in the open field by the reigning defensive player of the year. You can talk about these cornerbacks and how they cover and how many interceptions they have and their ball skills. I like guys that tackle. And watch Charles Woodson flash like lightning and in the open field and tackle a good back. That's a big-time play by Woodson. It's going to be third down from the nine. I know what the Bears are doing here. They don't want to leave the Packers a bunch of time. But they can get a first down at the three-yard line. And now they've kind of got it all the way down to 31 seconds. Here's a third down coming up when we come back. On the Toyota Halftime Show. It's an area of the field where Cutler has made mistakes historically. He's got to be careful with the football. Empty backfield. Third and six over the middle. Olsen. Touchdown, Chicago. Schultz and able to slide into the end zone. Robbie Gold almost missed that extra point. Just able to hook it in. He's only missed one in his career. 10-7. Well, Jay Cutler does a real nice job of seeing the field. He's one of the few quarterbacks this league that pedals away from center. And look at this throw. He puts it right on the money. Just past the outstretched arms of Brandon Chiller. Olsen takes it in the end zone. Good quick stroke by Jay Cutler. The ball comes out. You see the back pedal as he gets the ball from center. That gives him the ability to see the full field. Once he sees Olsen just get inside, he squeezes it by. And this guy, Cutler, he has his own set of mechanics. The QB oh, yeah. fundamental handbook, <laughs> he's got his own set of rules. Not many guys can drift away from the center, throw the ball while they're retreating, into that tight of an area. Look at Mike March. You can see why he's excited to be in Chicago. You know, that young man can throw it. Yeah, I said, John, most guys around the league don't use that backpedal. But Mike March's system, they are full field reads. The defense dictates where you're going to throw the football. There's not a predetermined route this guy is getting the football. So Jay Cutler uses that backpedal quite often. Jordy Nelson's done a nice job returning kickoffs. It's been 151 games since the Packers have returned to kickoff for a touchdown. And Nelson took this one to the 41-yard line. 18 seconds and a timeout remaining for the Packers. And the numbers uh, very much tilted in Rodgers' favor until that drive when Cutler gets back in there. And as you appreciate what these guys have done, both in their 20s, in their hopes and the franchise's hopes leading them for the next five, six years, if not more. Think about the two touchdown passes. How tight the windows are, as you guys like to say, in the red zone. Those passes were in about something like this big, you know? And they got them in there as the difference between very good quarterbacks and just another guy. I love a quarterback that throws with velocity. That's why you get him in those tight windows, Mike. Oh, go this way. How's it? About 25 yards gets you to Mason Crosby's range, maybe even 20. Hit a 56-yarder at Philly in week one. Rodgers trying to load up. The Bears are with him. 
running all the way across the field. Out of the pocket, out of the tackle box, able to get it away. And he and Mark Anderson have a chat 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Well, Aaron Rodgers, one thing we know, he can throw the football. Look at this throw to Greg Jennings. Then you look at this throw, but how many guys are going to trust their receiver to make these kinds of plays? And the quarterback, the courage to throw them, works the middle of the field, works outside. When you've got arm strength, and Aaron Rodgers has, you can make those kinds of throws. But what's really impressive is the way he trusts his receivers to make plays. That's when you talk about the draft guys coming out, timing, he gets it out. Arm strength's not important. Until you have a guy with a big hose like that, they're like, okay, oh, give me that guy. Arm strength and accuracy. <laughs> Eight seconds, they get it to Driver, tackled by Briggs. The Green Bay used its timeout. They will with four seconds remaining. And they take one shot at the end zone in all likelihood. And they're going to set up the Big Ben Hail Mary here. And I love coaching this play. I tried to tell our offensive players they never call defensive pass interference on this play. And the Packers yep. have six foot six inch Jer uh, Jermichael Finley. They've got some skilled receivers. Protect Rodgers, put it up in the end zone, and remember the referee will never call offensive pass interference. Right. Maybe we can get one off the ricochet. I, I've seen it called a few times, but it's nice to have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. He'll move around a little bit in that pocket, allow his receivers to get 51 yards down the field and then even. And you got the six foot four <laughs> it's inch. Brian Erlacher is your deep <laughs> yeah, safety. Right. He it's knows they're not going to call pass interference on this play. And he's still got a great vertical jump, too, in addition to that six four. Former safety in college. Bargain defensive foul, last play of the half. Rodgers finds space, launches to the end zone. Erlacher knocked it to Briggs. <laughs> How about that guy? It turns into an interception. All right. Pass defense and an interception. <laughs> well, the two guys who have combined to start 88 games together, highest of any linebacker combo in the league, well, work on this one. You don't see this very often. Brian Erlacher <laughs> playing free safety on the Hail Mary play. But he does have a 36, 37-inch vertical. You want your best football players in position. To make the big plays in a game. Yeah, Karch, play. Karch Karai can't spike yeah. it like that. And Tom Jackson's oh, back somewhere. What does he say? Knock it, knock down. it down. You got it, Tommy. That one's for you. Green Bay gets the ball to start the second half. Here's Boomer Toyota halftime show. Mary Battle has it rough on Monday night. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Jay Cutler. There is nowhere to run. The Green Bay Packers versus the Chicago Bears on Monday night football. These two teams, 10-7 Packers, as we get set to start the third quarter. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski. Just one small thing can change a half, and it did for Green Bay. Yeah, special teams have hurt the Packers. Four penalties, and right before the half, you hit a line drive to Devin Hester. That's the difference in his game right now. Yeah, and you look at this uh, Chicago offense. they got to get jump started. They're not going to run the football. They've got eight rushes for 24 yards by their running back. So use those running backs, Forte and Chester Taylor, as receivers. Get them the ball in space. Make some plays with the pass game with the running backs. Eight for 24. That's heaven. Green Bay would kill for that right now. <laughs> they, like everybody else thus far this year, cannot run it against the Bears. To the Packers first and Jordy Nelson. Reverse action fake didn't do anything. Tackle at the 20. Here are the numbers at the break. Packers have run it seven times for eight yards. Seven of those yards came on a quick run by John Kuhn. We have one rushing first down in a Bears-Packers game. What is going on? Three sacks by Green Bay, putting pressure on Cutler. That came in the first 21 plays. So that Chicago drive late in the half changed it. It's hard to run the football against Chicago, especially when you don't have a running back that you know much about. Good reason why Rodgers is in a no-back set here. Drive start at the 20. Chad Clifton back in the left tackle. Gain of about four on the pass to Donald Lee. We have a penalty marker down. Illegal formation. Offense number 76 was not on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. 
first down. Here's Susie Culver on the sidelines. Well, Mike, the Packers offensive line has been doing a great job against Julius Peppers. So Lovey Smith was telling his guys at halftime, if they're doubling Peppers, somebody has to be able to step up and take advantage of that. And you know how Lovey feels about turnovers and that turnover ratio. So he's very upset that right now they're down on that. That has uh, always been a calling card of the Lovey Smith teams here in Chicago for the last seven years. The March teams always turn it over a lot. And how that play out during the year. From the 15, Rodgers. Jordy Nelson. Gave him about seven and a half. Well, speaking of Peppers, let's see how he's doing. Backside cutoff block. There he is on a tackle. Peppers right here again. Penetration. Another tackle. Here's a nice pass rush. Good club. Good pursuit. Nice finish. Susie makes a good point. If you're doubling Peppers, somebody else has to step up and take advantage of one-on-ones. Keep an eye on Peppers. He's a clutch gamer. And again, if you weren't with us at the start, Tommy Harris inactive tonight. Coach's decision. Second down, down the middle to Finley. He's holding on to that. Chris Harris hit him. He got the worst of it. First down, Green Bay. Once again, Aaron Rodgers understanding the coverage, looks to his right, then comes back to his left to Finley. Rodgers, excellent anticipation as well. You'll see him. He's going to look to his right, but he knows he's coming back left. Once he read that double coverage, knew where the hole was, just between Lance Briggs and the safety. Third 20-plus yard pass to Finley here tonight in terms of a gain. They check on the injured Harris as we take a timeout. Back at Chicago, Chris Harris walked off the field under his own power after staying down for a good part of the timeout. So the free safety out of there for the Bears as Rodgers on first down gives it to Brandon Jennings. Uh, Jackson, excuse me, gets across midfield. And a first down into Bear territory at the 46. Back to this hit as Harris tried to stop Finley. Yeah, terrific throw in there, but boy, what a shot that Finley takes from Harris. Head kind of buckles back. Good to see that he walked off the field under his own power. I'm impressed Just the way contact. these Green Bay Packer receivers have hung on to the ball. The Chicago Bears will hit you, but your Michael Finley has shown no fear whatsoever going inside for Green Bay tonight. Josh Bullock has come in to replace Harris back at the safety spot. Rodgers to driver is caught. Erlacher over there with D.J. Moore, the nickelback at the 40-yard line, and we'll watch Harris closely on the sideline to see if he comes back. Obviously, with concussion awareness so prevalent in the NFL, you have a very thorough review by the medical staff before any player can come back in, and Harris, a very important part of this defense, now at the free safety spot. See the doctors checking him out on the sideline. Increased awareness over concussions. Protect the players. Second and four, here's Kuhn. Ran through the first tackle. Still going. He was not down, not whistled down, because he rolled over bodies, never making contact with the ground. That's the way it's ruled on the field. and becomes a gain of 15. And they want to go quick so it can't be replayed. But we have Briggs slow to get up, and the clock is stopped for an injury check on Briggs. Now, Kuhn is just a good football player. There's, you know, there's no sizzle to him. He's just a tough guy out of Shippensburg. We'll check on this right now and see if he was down or not. Briggs was Easy. slow to get up, and Terry McCauley, oh, he's the down. referee, yeah, whistled. <laughs> you know, Coon's so excited to so get good. some carries. This is going to be challenged. Well, of course it's got to be challenged. Well, Lovey Smith looked at it here. And yeah. That goes by. Wow. That goes the flag. They had already looked at it once in the stadium. The home team controls the replays that go up on the big board. So they fast snuck in a replay there, and then the challenge is taken here by Lovey. Well, maybe Briggs slow to get up. He's going to save them the play here. After review, the runner was contacted by number 99 of the defense and was down by contact at the 38-yard line. It will be third down for Green Bay. Chicago is not charged with a timeout. And they can challenge for a third time if their next one is successful. Anderson getting his hands on Kuhn before he did the body roll across the rest of the 
Packers there. And I think Mike McCarthy knew what mm -hmm. was going to happen. It, I would assume Green Bay had plenty of time to get them their best third down and two play call. Huge situation for this Bear defense to deny right here. Interesting. If Briggs doesn't stop there with what looked like a legit injury, then they don't get the chance to review that. Maybe that's a good way for people to go when teams are trying to hurry up and get a snap. It's out for Finley at the top of the screen. Erlacher coming. They throw where he was to driver. First down in front of the nickelback, D.J. Moore, at the 30. That's why Green Bay is very dangerous in third down and two and three. That's when they get a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. And Rodgers has so many options to go to. I don't know where you'd go, Josh. You got driver here, Jennings there, Finley over there. And this guy is pinpoint with his throws. That's a very good down and distance where Green Bay's had great success. I would go to the same place Aaron Rodgers went. Where can Donald Driver in that hash area? He seems to be unstoppable. <laughs> that is his office. James Jones on the outside. Trying to go right through Charles Tillman. Over there at the 25-yard line. You know, guys, Aaron Rodgers kind of pointed it to us last night. And I'm enjoying watching here. Rodgers on one side, Erlacher on the other side, and we talk about the cat and mouse with the coaches. You have it with the quarterback and the middle linebacker. Yeah, and Rodgers knows that Erlacher, Lovey Smith, these guys are outstanding at halftime making adjustments. I think the Bears have only given up six points in the second half all year. Yes. This is an impressive drive by Green Bay. If they could get something here, that's impressive. Rodgers has hit every pass on this drive. Second and three, check it down to Jackson. He'll get the first down at the 16-yard line. Let's show you a little bit of that back and forth with Rodgers and Erlacher tonight. You know, when you play the Bears, one thing Darren Rodgers told us, I've got to read Brian Erlacher's shoulder turn. If he opens his shoulders, I know he's going down the middle in that Tampa 2 defense. And that really helps Aaron Rodgers know where to go with the football. If I can read Erlacher's shoulder turn, I know it's too deep. I'm going to work my eye control. And so far, he's done an outstanding job of Key and Brian Erlacher finding out what coverage it is. But the one throw we just saw, it was Briggs that was going deep and almost picked it off. So there is that cat and mouse game that we're seeing by Erlacher and Rodgers. Peppers pressure. Rodgers flushed. Fakes the throw and goes down at the 11-yard line with a marker down as Tim Jennings came over for the stop. Peppers shaking up. Holding offense number 71. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Limping back to the huddle, the penalty on Josh Sitton. Well, Susie talked uh, coming out the half that Julius Peppers got to start making some plays. He's making tackles in a running game, but here he gets on Mark Tauscher and just jacks him up backwards, and all of a sudden he's just flying down the field. But Julius Peppers, he lines up in left end, right end, and makes impact plays from both positions, walking off the field. I know he's had a lot of sacks in his career. I wish I could tell you how many times he's been held Offensive linemen hold Peppers and keep him away from their quarterback. Very disruptive player. Keep an eye on him as he's on the sideline. It's first and 20 after the Packers' eighth penalty of the night. Rodgers going inside again for Finley. Back into the red zone. We, 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 we talk about the game within the game. You know, Julius Peppers making plays. Here's the pressure. Here's the hold on Julius Peppers. They call that one, John. I know you're probably surprised by that. But he does get away, and you'll see the injury probably sustained. Well, don't want to guess on injuries, but he goes down here. But what I love is the cat and mouse game right now. We talked about Erlacher going deep in that Tampa 2. The minute they see him buzzing deep, they take that little check down. It's either or. He goes high, throw it down. He goes low, go over the top. The opening drive of the half. Another long drive by the Packers. Rodgers to driver. Ooh, he is driven back by Tim Jennings. Now, one of the things with this Chicago Bear defense, we ran a similar defense when I was coaching, and this is a seven and a half minute drive. The third quarter is almost <laughs> over. They force you to convert third downs. They all 
tackle. They're corners. Take a look at Jennings taking a shot right here at driver. They don't give you big plays. And all 11 Chicago Bears can tackle. But what they haven't done tonight, John, is create a turnover. That's what that zone Tampa 2 is about. Three to the left, Jennings to the right, Rodgers looking Jennings' way. Flag is down as the touchdown is thrown to Jermichael Finley. Holding offense number 65. Ten-yard penalty, third down. Tauscher, the tackle. That's easy to see. You know, it's Julius Peppers. If you can't block him, holding him sometimes is even worse. But take a look at Peppers. Get off on the snap. And Tauscher's beat at the top, and he clearly grabs him. And when you have two referees standing behind the quarterback, they're not going to miss it. That's the second time Peppers has been held tonight, and that's as good as a sack, if you ask me. Yeah, that was right in front of the referee, and just to the left of the referee is the umpire. So they got those, those tackles pretty much in their vision all the time. Now third and 19, they can get a first down just inside the seven. Finley get the field goal a little bit closer. Almost right back to their other field goal, 38 yards. Rodgers hit all nine passes on the drop. You know, when you throw the ball underneath against the Chicago Bears, I could hear that. I felt that one all the way up here. Very good tackling defense. Not a lot of yardage after receptions. Mason Crosby's 5 of 5 on the season one good from 38 this one from 37 and this one is blocked he's done it again Julius Peppers 10th block pick of his career if it was clearly Peppers former college basketball star in North Carolina rejection eight minute drive no points decade ago when he played college hoops at North Carolina, Julius Peppers blocked six shots in seven NCAA tournament games. <laughs> He's a pretty darn good kick blocker in the NFL. They went after Brian Balaga and Josh Sitton. Their gap over there, Josh, was five guys. Oh, yeah, you knew where they were going. In fact, I spoke to Dave Talbot practice on Saturday. He said, we're going to get one. Now I know why. Finally, the Bears see the ball on offense in this half. Matt Forte tackled by A.J. Hawk. A gain of about five yards. So Peppers has the great series that ends that long drive that took eight and a half minutes. But, John, what does that do when you're Mike Martz on the Chicago side waiting to get the ball? It kills you. You're anxious to get out there and showcase your halftime adjustments. Your players are standing over. That's nine minutes. You stand over there waiting to call your first play. I never liked that. Because yeah, you're an offensive guy. Exactly. All the defensive guys are happy. Yeah, we stopped them. We go to the ball. Wait, well, you got six minutes. Go ahead and score. From the 31, Cutler. Last drive, a touchdown. Johnny Knox into the secondary. To the 33. 36 yards. Well, if you're not impressed with Jay Cutler's ability to rotate the spheroid, watch this throw. When he gets to the top of his drop, this ball, you can hear it whistling up here. Oh, terrific throw to Johnny Knox right in the numbers and leads him into the hole. But that's just a matter of time before you find the undrafted rookie, Sam Shields. That's a sharp post pattern that Johnny Knox ran. But clearly, Cutler knew exactly where he was going. There he is, the youngster out of Miami. First year undrafted free agent. They got a target on him, I promise you. Their catch over 20 yards gained by Knox tonight. Cutler. Nobody open. He's going. Put the brakes on Frank Zombo and cut back for the first down. It's Ramon Williams shaking up on the play. Green Bay. Well, those sneaky quarterbacks, you got to be careful. You know, sometimes they don't run out of bounds to avoid the hit. Sometimes they know they're going to be a yard or two short. If he slides, Cutler cuts it back to the inside. Here you'll see good protection. They're looking for the deep cross to Devin Hester. It's just not there. But the protection afforded him the time to get to see him. Like the cutback move right there. But my friend, get down because these Packers will hit you. Leading rusher in the game tonight, Jay Cutler, by a wide margin. He's got runs at 10, 16, and 11. They count. Bears with a chance for the lead. Out of the backfield. Caught to the 10-yard line. 
for Desmond Clark. You know, this guy, Jay Cutler, when he was at Vanderbilt, he ran all over the field. This guy has tremendous mobility. Forget about his arm for a minute. Here's another accurate throw that's thrown quick and accurate, but Cutler's hurting Green Bay with his mobility as well as his arm. John Wall was nice there. He saw the blitz coming from Nick Collins, got the ball out of his hand. That's what this offense is about. Not a lot of audible eyes get the line of scrimmage. Read the coverage on your drop. There's always an answer to what the defense does. That time, it was Desmond Clark. First and goal. Keep throwing. Why not? Cutler throws it to Hinsdale. It's one of the suburbs. <laughs> Get it out of here. I'm glad you said that. Well, that it's, it's a local reference. I, I thought it was a wide receiver yeah. that he was running around. Well, it, it's interesting now because here you are in the red zone where we're talking about the decisions being important and the space is a lot less short field yeah, you here. You just saw on first down they tried a maximum play action pass. Nobody was fooled. And when you get into second and long here against Green Bay, a team that likes to play maximum zones, every window is going to be tight. Here comes the Wildcats shift again. Forte is there at quarterback. Cutler's out at receiver. Bottom of the screen. Straight run, Forte up the middle for four. Third and goal from the six. I think it's a pretty good call, to be honest with you. You got a lot of zone defenders. Everybody's got their heels in the end zone. Let Forte jam it in there and set you up with a third down and convertible. But this situation right here, a field goal ties the game. Jay Cutler's got to be very disciplined. It's a touchdown or it's an incomplete pass. John, I couldn't disagree with you more. You got a guy that's hot at quarterback. You can put him out there, wide receiver, and run a little play inside. You got a hot quarterback, let him throw it. Wilson, Bennett, Hester, Knox, and Forte. Split out wide. No backs. Cutler throws complete. Twisting in for the touchdown is Bennett. No, nope, no touchdown. No touchdown. They say he's down shy of the goal line. The officials looked and looked at each other. They say he's touched down by contact. Shy of the goal line. All right, Lovey Smith in this situation, the opening game of the season against Detroit, went for it on fourth down, did not get it. He's clearly short of the end zone. It was He's rushed forward. by Williams. Now keep an eye on Green Bay right here. They do not have enough defensive linemen. They're going to use an offensive lineman as a goal line <laughs> run defender. Josh Sitton, number 71, is in on defense to play goal line defense for Green Bay. Timeout trying to beat the play clock. It was down at one. Challenge flag also thrown by Lovey Smith. He's going to challenge it first. Play clock was running, so they take a timeout and challenge. So those are kind of negate each other. But we believe by a whisker, this is going to be down by contact. And we'll show you these replays. Oh, here's Terry McCauley. After review, the runner was touched by defender number 38 and is down by contact at the half-yard line as ruled on the field. I want you to watch Chicago's the stripes on his jersey. The first team timeout. Chicago is also out of challenges for the remainder of the game. See the stripes right there, and then he brushes his face mask with his thumb. So there's the contact. Stripes of the jersey by Tremont Williams' right arm right there while the shin is down. Then he brushes the face mask. What it means, and I didn't mean to step on Terry McCauley, no challenges for the Bears until the two-minute warning of the fourth quarter. And now he's still going to go for a goal here. At, yep. one, at the one, and Green Bay again. They have an offensive lineman playing defensive tackle in this situation. Bears flex everybody out except for Forte. They're going to throw on fourth and an inch, and it's out of the hands of Desmond Clark. Incomplete, and the Packers will take over. Wow. You need just a little bit. And you throw it, and the veteran Clark can't hang on. Packer ball. And 25 years ago in this series, we had William the Refrigerator Perry busting it in on Monday Night Football from short distance. Lovey choosing to go for it, as he did against the Lions in Week 1. They pass this time and are stopped. They were stopped on runs from the one against Detroit in Week 1. Chris Harris 
Back in the game for Chicago. And well, this is a penalty you'll take. Half the distance of nothing is nothing. False start. Offense number 65. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Now, what about the throw here, guys? Well, the nose of the ball is down. The ball's thrown behind Desmond Clark, and the nose of the ball is down, and it's going to die. And Clark has a chance to open his hips and make a catch, but Jay should have thrown a better ball in that situation. Chicago's goal line offense, not good so far this season. Charles, would you have kicked the field goal? I would have kicked the field goal, but in hindsight, it's easy to say. But, mm -hmm. there's a, you know, you got you got to tie this thing up. A lot of time left. Julius Peppers says Tauscher moved. Ball start. <laughs> Offense number 65. You think it's going to be loud this goal. time? This crowd in like, that end zone. Like three-inch penalties here. <laughs> you know, running a football is hard in this situation. The Bears run through gaps, cause so many negative yardage plays. Take a look at Tauscher tipping right there. Run selection, very difficult. Two weeks ago, Briggs shot a gap and caused a fumble back here against Detroit. You did. Well, you're going to see that those gaps being shot again. <laughs> we have had a 99-yard Packer touchdown in this series by Robert Brooks in 95. Rodgers goes up top, and they get breathing room on a pressure throw to Finley. Gain of a half dozen. Well, if you're going to get the matchup with single high safety, Finley on Danielle Manning, that's where Aaron Rodgers will go. He'll work the outside against single high. Here you see Finley. This guy runs routes like a wide receiver on the money from Aaron Rodgers. That's a good matchup for the Packers. Mayrod's already thrown the ball 33 times. There's just no running game whatsoever to lean on. And in this field position, that's a lot to ask of your quarterback. Another throw. Driver. Second good open field tackle in a row by Tim Jennings on this side on Driver. Third in the yard coming up. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Zachary Bowman, but Jennings has played a lot since the first quarter on. Just a simple hitch route. Donald Driver's going to drive off. Ball's going to be thrown before he turns, but a nice sure tackle limiting no yards after the catch. When you can do that to these Packer receivers, you can do that against anybody. This coach's decision with Bowman, he's over here on the sideline with his helmet on. Third and one. Tonight, Green Bay, nine rushes, 21 yards. We'll try it with Kuhn. We had a whistle first, delay of game. No play, delay of game, off that. <laughs> Five-yard penalty, third down. Might give you a better chance to pick it up because you can't get the yard running against the yard, these guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the Bears will go their single high safety, and Rodgers will stand up and throw it to the outside, the one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's picking on those corners when they do not play cover two. And 12 penalties. Yes. Costly ones in all phases for the Packers tonight. That's been their Achilles heel. Six in this quarter, three on this drive, all motion penalties. It's the Green Bay team that was the most penalized in the league last year with 118. And the quarter will come to an end before they have to run this third down. And now the other end of the stadium can make some noise. South end zone's really happy about it. No points in the third quarter. <laughs> The Green Bay Packers, the Chicago Bears, quarter number four here at Soldier Field in Chicago. The last two unbeaten teams in the NFC. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski, Susie Culver with you. Third and six to begin the quarter for the Packers. Gets the four-man rush. Rodgers throwing incomplete. Harris on the coverage on the back end of the safety position in the zone. It'll be a punt to Devin Hester coming up. Very few times does Aaron Rodgers wish he had a throw, but he'd like to have that one back. He had driver on a little corner route. Just threw it low into the outside. He had a chance for the completion. Boy, the Bears will get outstanding field position right here. 
Last punt by the rookie match day was not a good one. It was a line drive, and Hester was a tackle by the punter away from his first punt return for touchdown in over two years. Better kick with good hang time and great distance. 56 yards. Took Hester back to the 39. Picked up a block, and here comes Hester. He might go. Devin Hester. Got it. Touchdown, Chicago. I just can't believe they kicked the ball with this guy. His resume is just too good. Mastay kicks a great punt out of the end zone. No one touches Devin Hester. You give this guy the ball in open quarters, he's going to hurt you real bad. That's twice tonight for Devin Hester. What a player. Gold adds the extra point. He's fourth all time now in NFL history. Punt returns for a touchdown, tied for third. The fourth man to do it eight times. And it's been over two years, but finally, Devin Hester back in the end zone, and the Bears on top. It's rocking on the lakefront in Chicago. Hasn't sounded like this in a couple of years, because Hester hasn't brought one back since December 30 of 97. Eric Metcalf and Brian Mitchell have 10 and 9 career punt returns, respectively. And Tim Mastay, the rookie from Kentucky, kicked a booming kick. But it went back. A short kickoff here. Jordy Nelson returning for Green Bay to the 28-yard line. Well, remember when Lovey Smith kept saying, almost like it was a recording, Rex Grossman is my quarterback? He started to sound that way about Devin Hester. Devin Hester is my punt returner. Why? Because people wondered, it's been two years. By moving Hester to wide receiver, you took away one of the most vital weapons we had as a team, those Hester punt returns. Remember, he had five kick returns in 06, six kick returns in 07. Kept him on the punts. He hadn't done it since the last game of 07. But the beauty of Devin Hester breaking free and his own version of a Lambeau leap. Here at Soldier Field, puts the Bears on top. Now Rodgers and the Packers need to respond. Peppers tackles Brandon Jackson. You know, Devin Hester, I've seen guys that run 4-4 and 4-3. Hester runs 4-don't-know. I don't know how fast that guy is. I like seeing that super slow-mo stuff so you can actually see him. But when he hits his stride, Forget about it. Well, John, I got to give you some props. We did those Monday night football luncheons today, and you said, I would never kick the ball to Devin Hester. Now I know why. Second and seven from the 31. Another flag All on the window. Offense from the 76. Five-yard penalty, second down. This is what Julius Peppers does for you when he's playing at home in front of a crowd like this. He's been held twice. He's caused at least three false starts. Oh, you're not going to see it here. He's going to be uh, on the other side. But Julius Peppers, the threat of his getoff, he's caused four penalties. He's blocked the kick tonight. This guy's having a game of his life. Well, the bright lights are on. He always plays well. You guys said at the very beginning of the show. Second and a dozen. Here's Peppers busting up the middle on Clifton. Rodgers throws the other way to James Jones, who got out of a tackle, got across the 40, and Green Bay has a first down. Well, Julius, Julius Peppers, it, it, it seems like he's made every play on the field. Here he is up against Chad Clifton with the inside release. You can almost call holding oh, right there. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. hey, he's, a, you know, he's had an impact on every single play, it seems. <laughs> Man, I wish he wasn't uh, in Carolina when I was coaching. <laughs> this guy's scary. Rogers, driver.
first down across midfield for Green Bay. This is what I wanted to see. I wanted to see these quarterbacks go after each other in the fourth quarter. And Rodgers is keeping everybody under control. McCarthy is shifting personnel, changing people in and out. And Aaron Rodgers continues to take what the defense gives them. The question is, can Green Bay sustain a drive? They've been un unable to do that for a while. No, they sustain a drive. They have to score. Rodgers uses one of the three receivers right, Finley, up to the 41. Second straight game over 100 yards for Jermichael Finley, helping Aaron Rodgers' big numbers as he's trying to avoid cramping up. Rodgers closing in on 300 yards. He's got a touchdown and interception tonight. Jay Cutler's 12 of 20 with also a touchdown and a pick. But Green Bay's problems of last year, special teams and penalties, have been a big part of the story tonight. A blocked field goal, a pump return by Devin Hester that led to a touchdown, and then a pump return touchdown for Hester. The reason the Bears lead by four in this battle of the last two undefeateds in the NFC. Rodgers again, driver. A lot of first downs thrown it here on the outside to the 35. Yeah, well, you're seeing how the Green Bay Packers, they're going empty. They're spreading the field out. They are forcing the Chicago Bears to declare their defense. You spread them sideline to sideline in the pre-staff phase. Rodgers knows exactly where he wants to go with the football. He looks left just to move people, open up that window for Donald Driver. This is when Aaron Rodgers is at his best. He loves spreading the field out. The ball will just come out quickly. And Jaws is going to hurt him and not having Jermichael Finley. He's out on the sideline here for a moment. Donald Lee takes over a tight end. They still got a ton of receiving talent on the field. Number 35, Jordy Nelson. Give him space, give him yards. Six, they couldn't pull the ball out. Daniel Manning tried. Trey Wingo has got a sports center right now. Michael, thank you. Pro Football Hall of Famer George Blanda died today at the age of 83. He began his career right there in Chicago with the Bears at 49 and didn't retire until 1975. Meanwhile, let's go back to Mike Tirico. Thank you, Trey. Blanda remembered before the game here in Chicago. Finley heading off to the locker room to be checked out. Second and four. Rodgers a pump will come back underneath to Jackson. First down, 25-yard line. And you talk about, John, what this team does, sustaining drives. And they've had two really long ones here tonight. Yeah, they sure have. And I'll tell you, when they check the ball down that time to Brandon Jackson, you better make sure you have your mouthpiece in because he was hit <laughs> simultaneously. How's that for a word? Yeah. By three Chicago Bear defenders. They're going to force Green Bay to take three or four, at least five more plays to get the ball into the end zone. And with those hits, John, just trying to create a turnover, which they haven't been able to do yet. Rodgers has completed 32 here tonight. We'll toss to John Kuhn out of Shippensburg University. Look at John Kuhn run for the first down and keep it going. Moving the pile all the way to the six-yard line. The rugby scrum. <laughs> Look like one of those old-fashioned Green Bay Packer backs. <laughs> Take a look at the toss sweep right at you in your living room. He finds the lane and gets downhill. And how many Chicago Bears does it take to bring that bowling ball down? I can hear Vince Lombardi now. There's a seal here a and a seal there and an alley for John Kuhn to run into. The old Packer sweep. Kuhn is six foot two fifty. At Shippensburg, a Division II school, is a record setter, a fullback for his first three years here with Green Bay, played a little halfback in preseason, and because of the injury, he's got to be the number two guy. He's doing a nice job. Jackson's the new number one back. Tackled by Erlacher and Peppers, gain of about two. And a lot of what Green Bay does happens before the snap. They put players in motion, they reset, and they allow Aaron Rodgers to take a look at the defense and try to run or pass into optimum looks. And that time they did a nice job running the ball away from an overload. Once again, red zone defense versus one of the best red zone quarterbacks I can remember. And don't forget the mobility of Aaron Rodgers. 
very beneficial in this area of the field. From the six, Rogers rolls and gets rid of it. Flag, roughing the passer. Henry Melton. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 69, illegal contact to the helmet. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And Rogers limps off the field. Maybe cramping. He's been working on there. Finley went up the tunnel earlier as he was cramping. Contact to the helmets and automatic. Rogers going to stay out there. Matt Flynn is the backup. Third year man out of LSU. He's only played in eight games. He did come in when Rogers was hurt in Tampa. Other than that, it's been mostly mop-up work for Flynn. The only other quarterback the Packers have. First and goal, a great time for a little play-action pass. That's what Dallas hurt Chicago with last week on an early down. A couple of inexperienced tight ends in there for Green Bay. Rodgers slow to get over there to get it to Jackson. Not much there. Well, Rodgers limping around. He's cramping up, and you know, sometimes you just can't get that push off. Like I said, he almost didn't make the handoff. It's another drive, essentially taking half a quarter to get down here. Outside of the big run by Kuhn, the Packers have not been able to run the football effectively. And you know, these this three yards down here, that, it could be 30 yards. It's hard to run the football in this area of the field. Rodgers throws off the hands of the rookie Quarles out of Penn State. The fifth rounder playing his first NFL game here tonight. Inactive the first two games. Third down coming. Well, that's a well-thrown ball. Quarles, the rookie, had a chance for his first NFL touchdown. I thought Rodgers laid the ball in there nice, right away from coverage. You got to snatch the football away from your body. So far, we've seen the Chicago Bears and the Packers tight ends fail to make tough catches. In, her, in the end zone. Well, Rodgers having a tough time. He's really cramping up. Drive is taking half the quarter. Rodgers wants the ball. He's got it. But we have a whistle. And we have a timeout coming by Chicago. Chicago. And go get Aaron Rodgers from Gatorade, Green Bay Packer training staff. <laughs> Third down when you come back. You know what was... Green Bay has had three very long drives tonight that have almost taken 28 minutes, about 35 plays all combined, and they have a field goal and a blocked field goal to show for it. Let's see how this drive ends. Third and goal. Three in the pattern. Rodgers scrambling. Pumping for the pylon. Does he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Aaron Rodgers. We talk about a great drive. Take a look at Aaron Rodgers. He told us he's going to use his mobility in the red zone. But how about selling out for your football team at the front pylon? And we said going to break, guys. The Bears took that timeout, and they needed to because they were confused. But the benefit of it, Rodgers, who was cramping, chance to get a minute and a half, get some fluids in him, extra point knocked in by Crosby. Who knows if he's able to do that on third down without that timeout. Uh, I doubt if he would have been able to do it, Mike. Rushing TD finally for the Packers. He gives them the lead. Aaron Rodgers, second rushing touchdown of the year. Gives the Packers a three-point lead. So they finally take one of those long drives and punch it in. Johnny Knox is back deep for the kickoff. And he takes it to the one. Slipping, able to keep his feet. 
Knox dives forward to the 26-yard line, back to the Rodgers run. Well, Jermichael Finley is not in a game. This is Donald Lee, and that's where Aaron Rodgers wants to throw against bump and run coverage. He clearly looks left, and Lee doesn't get it done, so off to the races goes Aaron Rodgers. And how about this? Rodgers, at quarterback, he's going to look left. He wants to throw it to Donald Lee. Lee gets covered. Off Rodgers goes. He's cramping. Peppers is chasing him. It's third and goal. Super effort and great finish for the Green Bay Packers to answer a score with one of their own. This is only the second offensive possession of the half for the Bears. Cutler hit by Matthews. Throws an interception. Nick Barnett gets it as the pressure came up from the passer. Defense number 58, illegal contact in the helmet. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Butler got rocked on the play. That's why he threw the interception to Clay Matthews. You'll see it here. He, he takes a shot right here. As you'll see Matthews comes against Kevin Schaefer. Working, working, working. You see Matthews right there before the quarterback Cutler took a shot. Personal foul, take it out to the 41-yard line. Let's get you back to the hit, Jaws. Yeah, you'll see it right here. As Cutler's looking downfield, he's got that deep dig open, but, oh, there's, wow. there's the helmet right under yep. the chin. Absolutely the correct call. Matthews held off by Schaefer that time, and the pass was incomplete for Hester out of his arms. You know, the rookie Frank Zabo making a key mistake there, roughing the passer. But veteran right tackle Kevin Schaefer has done an excellent job tonight against Clay Matthews. These are back-to-back -back plays. He's setting on the power rush by Matthews. Schaefer's stepped in and done a nice job tonight, given all the injuries and guys playing different positions on his bare offensive line. He's usually the third tackle. Frank Omiel was the right tackle starting the first game and in Dallas. But Chris Williams got hurt. Omiel flipped over to left tackle. Schaefer came in. Holman! Underneath throw, a lot of room for Forte. First down to the 44-yard line. Going for the ball, going to cost him 50. Oh, yeah. Fifteen yards, fifteenth flag. Mike McCarthy can't believe it. I mean, for the life of me, I don't know what Green Bay's thinking right here. Sure, they're going for the strip, but I heard the whistle. I think the referee calls as a whistle. Forward progress was done. Defense number 36 threw the runner to the ground after the play was over. Fifteen-yard penalty, automatic first down. Either Nick didn't hear the whistle. He just made an aggressive mistake there. But Mike McCarthy, 15 penalties tonight. You'll see it right here. Nick Collins, this, this play's over with. You see the referee, hand up, play's over, done. Nick Collins throws him to the ground. He'll call that every time. Game plus flag with 30-yard pickup for the Bears. Away from Matthews. Cutler got it to Olsen. He's got a lot of room. Greg Olson takes it to the 13-yard line. Both quarterbacks showing their ability to move in the pocket. Very effective today. Yeah, this, 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 is, this is personal. You know, Jay Cutler, he's going up against Aaron Rodgers. He's trying to make a play. You'll see Clay Matthews. Here he is against Kevin Schaefer. Wins to the inside. But good mobility by, by Cutler. Gets the ball out of his hand. But you'll see Matthews. He wins quick on Schaefer there. But here's the awareness. Know where your people are. Have an answer. Look at the Jay eyes. Cutler. I, yeah. you know, I can't say enough about his toughness and poise in the pocket. Bears trying to answer and take the lead. Matthews coming. Pass knocked down and incomplete. Clay Matthews, son of Clay Matthews, great linebacker in the NFL for 19 years. His uncle Bruce Matthews, Hall of Fame offensive lineman in the league for 19 years. This was a guy who only became a starter towards the end of his career at USC, rocketed up to be a first-round pick. NFL great defensive rookie performance last year with 10 sacks, made the Pro Bowl, three sacks each of the first two games, and some pressures here tonight, but no sacks. 
Well, if he's going to make a sack, he's going to need one shortly. Bossing Forte. Matthews helped force that deeper, and Tremont Williams escorts him to the sideline. This guy, Clay Matthews, what a play here, setting the edge. That's what you want your defenders to do. These outside linebackers, they run a toss sweep right at him, and he sets the edge. He keeps his outside arm free. He forces the ball back up inside. Clay Matthews, he has first-round talent, but he has a chip on his shoulder like an undrafted free agent, and that combination makes him special. This is third and 12 in field goal range, and a field goal will tie the game, so you cannot make a mistake down here. Cutler complete to Bennett. Going to be down at the 8 and set up about a 25 or 6-yard field goal to square the game. Well, Earl Bennett caught that ball. If I was Earl Bennett, knowing the way that this defense is flying around, I would tuck that ball away. He took some shots. Fortunately, he didn't fumble, setting up this field goal attempt. Yeah, but penalties. Penalties hurt Green Bay right there. Two personal fouls. That's 30 yards in penalties that put the Chicago Bears on the map on this drive. Cullen Jenkins of the Packers. Sitting down on the field, shaking up. And now coming off. Jenkins playing with a broken left hand happened against the Eagles. It got uh, casted and bandaged, and he came out and still played in the second half of that one. This is uh, a Packer defense without Johnny Jolly, Justin Harrell. Jolly out for the year. Harrell for his ACL, trying to block a field goal. Mike Neal, their rookie, has been injured, so they are very thin on the defensive front. One of the most accurate kickers in league history. Missed earlier from 49. From 25, Robbie Gold squares the game at 17. In the last two years we've been here for a division game, we've had overtime. Let's go for three. Okay, Stewart, thank you. Stewart, Steve Young, Matt Millen have you covered here after the game. While that Bears drive was going on toward the end of it, we saw Jermichael Finley run back out to the sideline. We'll see if he comes in after this kickoff. Jordy Nelson takes it on the run at the six. It's back up the middle, and Nelson down at the 25, where Rodgers and the Packers will take over with all their timeouts. 3.52 left in an all-even game. Have not disappointed tonight. Aaron Rodgers has starred only two incompletions in the second half. Over 300 yards. This rushing touchdown put the Packers ahead a drive ago. The Bears have since tied. Cutler brought him down the field for the tying field goal. That was his touchdown to Greg Olson earlier. Devin Hester, for the first time in two years and two games, brings a punt back the distance. And just for good measure, since it's against the Packers, no Lambeau leap. How about a Bears bounce into the stands? at the south end of Soldier Field. And Jermichael Finley is back in the lineup at tight end for Green Bay. Got an IV in the locker room after cramping up. He's over 100 yards for the second straight game. Rodgers, quick game. Jordy Nelson, two tackles missed. Lance Briggs did not. Gain of six. Well, the Green Bay's got plenty of time. They've got all their timeouts left. They've got to concentrate on making first downs. No negative plays. They must eliminate the penalties. But clearly, Green Bay is going to multiple receiver sets, no back offense, which is what they've done throughout the second half, and let Aaron Rodgers see, react, and deliver. Four-man rush gives Rodgers a lane to run. Chased from behind, but he accelerates past Erlacher to the 46. First down. Complete game. This guy's a complete quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have all these formations, personnel groupings, progressions. Nobody's open. I got cramping going on. I scramble. I'm diving for touchdowns, first downs. Aaron Rodgers. What a performance tonight. He's taking the Chicago Bears out of the coverage scheme that they're comfortable with. That cover, too. He's making plays with his legs. They go to that pure zone. Pepper 
Rodgers held it bay. Rodgers just gets rid of it. Says, I got a receiver over there, although I don't see anybody over there. And now they'll talk about it. It will be intentional grounding. Didn't leave the tackle box. Intentional grounding. Offense number 12. Ball in place with the spot of the foul. Loss of down. Yeah, Second there's down. quick pressure on Aaron Rodgers right here. And he just slings this away, but he is clearly not outside the tackle box. You're going to get that called against him. One of the few mistakes Aaron Rodgers has made tonight. First two games, Green Bay, eight penalties. Tonight, 16. They doubled it. I think right now, here on second and 20, Aaron Rodgers is going to work hard to get an 8-10 to 10 yard gain and give him a chance with a normal third down situation. But you don't want to hold the ball for very long against this fair pass rush right now in this noise. Complete to James Jones. Lost the football. Still in bounds. Fair ball. Tim Jennings knocked it away. And comes up with the recovery. <laughs> How did that thing stay in bounds? Did it? Well, we'll see right here. It's Briggs and Erlacher yep. chasing out. the ball. Those two guys oh, clearly in bounds. Look at Lance Briggs and Brian Erlacher. Erlacher. That's what they do. Since Levy Smith got here in 2004, nobody has caused more turnovers than the Chicago Bears. It's conversation going on here with the officials, guys, at midfield as you look at these replays. Well, I don't know what the conversation would be about. And the decision is Packer ball. Clearly a fumble, just an outstanding play by both linebackers for the Chicago Bears. And talk about a linebacker tandem joining the hip. Those guys are all over the field. You Those see, two what, guys, they came from the opposite side yeah, of the field. Yeah, yeah. It's just effort, and it's just nonstop passion to the football when they talk about Brian Erlacher and Lance Briggs. Who says those two guys are slowing down? Looks like Ch Mike McCarthy's challenging mm -hmm. this. From our angle, I don't know why. Now, the call on the field was important because the Bears didn't have any challenges left. Recovering player was out of bounds when he recovered it. So it was Jennings. This was watching as the replay happened. As you guys were talking about the strip, as Jennings comes back to get it, where is he? Clearly inbounds as that foot yeah. swings back around. Yep. Challenged by Green Bay. Don't think they'll win it. Well, turnovers after receptions have been a hallmark of the Bears under Lovey Smith, Erlacher, and Briggs. A great combo together, 88th career start. Looks like they forced another one. Here's Terry McCauley. After review, the recovering player never went out of bounds. He recovered the ball inbounds. The ruling on the field is, is confirmed. Green Bay has charged their first team timeout. That becomes an important part of this. If the Bears score, that takes a timeout away from the Packers if they need to go back and respond. So the Bears take over at the Packer 46 with one timeout, 218 left. And the Bears go empty, no backs in the backfield. What an aggressive, <laughs> aggressive game. Backpedaling Cutler, not on the same page as Knox, incomplete. Let's go back to the turnover. Just watch where Briggs and Erlacher come from to make this play. Look at these two inside linebackers and what they do when the ball is thrown. This is called a pursuit drill. When the ball is thrown, pursue and get on the ball carrier. But what an effort by the Chicago Bears captain, Brian Erlacher, and his loyal assistant, Lance Briggs. Those two guys, <laughs> like that. 88 games together. Wow. James Jones, the fourth-year man out of San Jose State. Hoping his turnover isn't the difference. Pressure up the middle. Cutler gets away as a holding flag. Coming in interception. And then fumble. Let's see if it's ruled. They pick in a fumble. Now they're coming in and saying incomplete. On the far side, they had it marked as a catch and a fumble. Over here, the ruling is incomplete. He's got a holding flag back in the backfield. Holding. Offense number 57. 10-yard penalty. Second down, the pass is ruled incomplete. The center, Olin Cruz, who is busting up the middle. 
Well, Green trying Bay, to stop the blitz up the middle. Green Bay is into that psycho package. Again, they have one defensive lineman and five linebackers. They're trying to get their best pass rushers on the field. Take a look at Kruitz, the center right here. He's going to hold, coming in on your left side. There you see it. You don't see it all that great, but, boy, Chicago had a great opportunity with that field position. They continue to come out with this no-back set. Second and 20, Cutler down the middle. Also, the tight end goes up to get it with a marker down. He's down at the 35. That's a two-minute warning. Uh, once again, Jay Cutler taking a chance, going to a guy that he trusts. Pass interference, defense number 54. Kelly's decline, first down. Given his receiver, Olsen a chance to make a play. Lays it up, Olsen makes the grab over Chiller. With the two-minute warning, the Bears get to the edge of long field goal range. Robbie Gold's career-long field goal is a 52-yarder made here against the Lions almost a year ago. They were right at about 52-yard range here. As the Bears have one timeout with a buck 59 left in our game's tied at 17. You might want to see a running play here. And, uh, no, this is, this is the way to clock for Green Bay to use their timeouts, but clock management here. You don't want to throw the ball every play and give Green Bay a full resource of clock and timeouts. The only runs have been quarterback scrambles. 35. They'll run it with Johnny Knox on the end coming around and only gained two yards. Matthews the tackle. Packers stop the clock here with a minute 51 to go. One timeout left Green Bay. Be right back here in Chicago. Robbie Gold has eight game-winning kicks, five in overtime, six of them happening here at Soldier Field. He's not a great long kicker. Very accurate, but accurate for about 45 in. Doesn't attempt many 50-plus yarders. Second and eight, Woodson and Matthews coming. The pass is in the air. It is intercepted, but a flag is thrown, likely for pass interference. Morgan Burnett. The rookie over there as Collins came away with the pick. Pass interference. Defense number 42. Automatic first down. 17 penalties ties the all-time Green Bay Packer record that has stood for 55 years. Well, you'll see it here. The ball is thrown to Earl Bennett. Underthrown, and this is what you get. You get Burnett clutching him, grabbing him. That'll be called every single time. The underthrow works for the Bears. And Nick Collins showed great range, reading the quarterback, made a heck of a play, but you know, we've seen mistakes today by Zamba, who roughed the passer. You see a pass interference by Burnett, and that's what happens when you play a lot of rookies extended periods of time in big games. First and goal from the nine. Green Bay can only stop it one time. Bears can use most of the clock. A run with Forte to the five, to the three-yard line. You see this situation before at times you'll let the other team score. That's right. That's your only shot. They kick a field goal with no time left. It's one of those where you think, at least for a second, do you let him score? It says it's such a short field goal at this point. That's the only way you're really going to give yourself a chance. Let him score. You well, saw it. the Raiders miss yeah. one yesterday. You yeah. saw the yeah. Saints miss one. There are no automatics in the no. kicking game, but when you have Aaron Rodgers, you might want to give him a shot. Forte in the back, Cutler milking the clock. Final minute. Forte, left side. Right at the one-yard line. Now McCarthy will stop it here with 53 seconds on third and goal. Well, right now, it feels going to be shorter than an extra point. Yeah, and then the play here, since Green Bay's exhausted their timeouts, your play runs about five seconds. You get, if it's inbounds, assuming there's no mental error there, you get the automatic 40-second clock reset at 48. Brings you down to about nine seconds when you call timeout. So you'd be leaving them five seconds unless they score. Seventeen penalties on the Packers. Wow. 
if you take this time it's two one way to avoid letting them score is take a knee but you'd always think you just take a touchdown if they're going to give it to you well chicago's goal line offense that might be the best thing <laughs> third and goal forte not going to get in there woodson couldn't get to the ball the clock is reset here at 48 so it's going to take it down to about eight seconds. Lovey Smith will burn his last time out after they milk it, and it'll be up to Gold with an extra point size field goal for the lead. This is where you look to your special teams coach, and you get every available big man you have. You know the Bears are not going to fake it. It's an all-out block attempt. I'd get go Jermichael Finley. I'd get the biggest, tallest, most athletic guys I have and put the all-out block on. That's your only chance. Well, it has been a night where special teams and penalties, the problems of the Packers last year, have been the story for Green Bay. The return by Devin Hester that set up one touchdown, the return for a touchdown, the blocked field goal by Julius Peppers, and the penalties, 17 of them, most penalties in more than a half century against the Packers that happened against the Boston Yanks. I'll tell you how long ago and how far it's been since it's happened. 11 of those penalties in the second half. And now Robbie Gold out of Penn State, only Nate Kading, Mike Vanderjack are more accurate kickers in NFL history. From 19 yards for the lead. Bears lead. teams in certain sports when they're good it's good for the game yep and chicago and the bears and when you're a little kid around here you learn bear down chicago bears and it's uh looking like the bears are going to be the last of the undefeateds in the nfc at three and oh with four seconds remaining in the game have there been 180 meetings between these two teams this is 180 have they all been like this <laughs> no now what oh. do you do here well i get four Charles seconds left. on the field That's i go right. to him well, and I say it. make a play. That, yeah. Green Bay will have something, a gadget for this play. It all starts with number 21. If I'm Chicago, I don't kick it to him either. One of the elite return men in college football history helped him win the Heisman at Michigan during his early days here in the NFL. Jordy Nelson will get it. It'll lateral around in all likelihood. Here goes Nelson throwing it back to Woodson at the 16. Woodson trying to keep it alive, getting it over to Donald Driver who goes across the field. A flag is down for a forward pass. James Jones throws it back. Not whistled dead yet. It's back at the six with Jennings, who <laughs> sends it back to Tremont Williams. Again, a flag is down from earlier as Williams comes up the field, looks for somebody else to find. His pass across the field is another forward pass to Jennings, so the hat's down. Ellington comes pass. down, the game's over. I'm going to say the team. By rule, the game is over. With the foul. Bears 20, Packers 17. 